Hey everyone, it's TK Friday, my favorite day of the week. The title of today's episode is Frequency Separation to the Rescue. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Cully. The other day I got a comment from my last tutorial on the Sarus Cranes, the full edit. This comes from Larry Greenbaum. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Larry. He says, thanks for this tutorial that is filled with editing steps to improve skills with the TK8 panel. Please look at the image and notice the brown vertical band that goes from the top down through the left bird. How would you eliminate this distracting band? Thanks, Larry. I spent a good part of yesterday working out the edit for this TK Friday, which is the image you see before you, the before and the after and the layers it takes to make it. This was going to be a full edit. Now I'm going to save this till next week. After I got Larry's comment, I thought, I got to open up this image because I don't know what he is talking about. So I opened up the image, as you can see here, and you see this line here. I thought this was like a tree trunk or something in the background. But if you look, it follows the whole way down on top of this bird here. I don't know what it is. Was the image shot through like plexiglass? Is it a reflection? Is it a lens flare? I have no idea, but I'll tell you what, Larry is correct. It is distracting. And now that I see it, I cannot not see it. So I want to show you how to fix it today using frequency separation. And I want to wish each and every one of you out there happy holidays. This is my gift to you, maybe a shorter video today. And then next week, I'll do a full edit on this image right here. This is going to be a good one. It's not that hard to do, but it really gives you a nice dramatic result when it's all said and done. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, just click on my affiliate link. It's right below in the description. Click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store. You could purchase training videos, the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. And if you use my promo code, DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. You're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you do that. And for that, I thank you. Okay, then let's get started. Let's get rid of this distracting brown line through here using frequency separation. Now, if you downloaded the image last week and you went through the edit, all you need to do is click on the top layer and then click this TK button right here for TK actions and click on frequency separation and this Gaussian blur dialog box comes up, click okay. And it's gonna give you a color blur layer and a texture layer. And then what I like to do is click on the color blur layer and click this button right here. It puts a blank pixel layer above there. I like working on a blank pixel layer rather than working on the color blur layer. You can work either way, but I just like it better this way. Also, if you followed along and you have all these layers intact, you're also going to have two channels, one called birds and one called background. We'll be using those. Now, if you didn't do the edit, but you wanna try this frequency separation out, I got you covered. I uploaded to my Dropbox a TIFF file with the, edit, with the completed edit and it still has the brown streak coming through here, which we're gonna fix with frequency separation. Go ahead and download that image. It will have the two channels included, birds and background, and you can just click TK actions and frequency separation, click okay, and click on color blur, and click this button right here to add a blank pixel layer, and you could work that way too without doing the full edit. So I got, got it covered both ways. Okay, now here's your first step. Now, when you start this action out, it sets you up with a clone stamp tool, okay? We're on this layer here. You want to make sure you're on the layer you made, the blank pixel layer. Now, we need to protect our birds because we'll be working on the background first. Then we'll work on the birds secondly. What we'll do first is come up to my channels and click on background. And we're going to load that as a selection. So click this button right here. It loads it as a selection. Now you don't see marching ants anywhere, but you have this indicator here showing you that you do have a selection and it's only selecting the background. By the way, I'm working with the full edit, all my layers here. If you download that TIFF file, it's only going to have one layer, but it's going to have the channels. When you click on the my channels button, you're going to see those two channels in there. So you can follow along just like you see me doing here. 
with the full edit with all its layers. The only difference is you'll just have one layer. Now the way this action was made, it was made to work on the color blur layer and the texture layer. This is just something I do. I just like it, like I said, having a blank pixel layer. So normally this sample is set up to current layer and that is what you would need it on current layer when you're working on the texture layer or the color blur layer. However, if you make a blank pixel layer and I go above here for the color blur, you got to come and change this to current and below. When I go and work in the texture layer, I'll have to come and change it back to current layer. But for now, we're going to leave it on current and below. So don't forget that. So I'm set for current and below. I'm going to get a nice big brush here. I'm using the stamp tool, as I said. And also, I'm only going to be able to work on the background. I won't be able to get onto the birds unprotected. And you can see my selection indicators. Now, the way this clone stamp works, I need to sample an area. So on a Mac, you hold your option key down and click an area you want to sample from. On a PC, you hold down the alt key and click. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm holding my option key, key down and I'm clicking right here. And then I could come and clone right here. By the way, I'm at 100% opacity and I can just keep working through here coming down like this. I can sample from a different area. I'm holding my option key down again, and I'm gonna get this right in here. And in this area, it's like darker, so I'm gonna sample from a darker area, come here. Now we gotta, we are protected from getting onto the birds here, but if I have my sample point encompassing the bird, it will put the bird wing out here, and we don't want that, so we gotta stay away from that. So we want to stay up in this area. So I'm going to come over here. It's good to sample from different points. And again, you got to be careful. You don't want to get near those bird wings. And I think that looks pretty good. Now you can see right in this area here, you see these little lines coming through here. That's coming from this texture layer. So next we're going to have to clone that texture layer to fix that. So what we'll do is click on that texture layer. Now you can see where I've cloned right here. Now I'm on the texture layer, but remember I told you on that texture layer, you need to change your sample to current layer. Very important, don't miss this. And now all we need to do, I'm gonna hold my option, Mac, Alt, PC. I'm gonna click like right in this area, right here and watch, I can just clone over that and get rid of those lines, just like that. All we're doing is actually cloning the texture itself. And basically what happens when you're doing frequency separation, frequency separation separates out texture from color. So we're working with color on this layer and we're working only with texture on this layer. Let's go ahead and take a look at a before and after. So come up to the group frequency separation and click the eye. Here's the before and here's the after. And I like it except for, I think I can blend a little bit better up in here. So I need to go to the color layer to do that. So let's go on the color layer. And remember right now we're set to current layer for this color layer. I need to set this to current and below. I'm gonna option or all click right here and let's just blend this a little bit better. I'm going to sample here, option or alt click and get right in here and maybe right over in here. I think that looks better. Here is the before and here's the after. I'm seeing a little bit of residue right in here. So let's go back to the texture layer and let's change this back to current layer. And let me option or alt click right in this area and clone this right around like so because there was a little bit of that residue in there and now I believe it's gone. So here's the before and here is the after. There's a little bit of residue up in here too, so option or alt click right here. Make sure we get it out. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here is the after. And I think we're pretty good. I'm seeing a repeating pattern right here, so let's go back to this blank pixel layer set this to current and below, and I'm gonna sample right here, option or alt click, and just paint over that. Yeah, that was a little bit of a repeating pattern. Here's the before, and here's the after. Now we're gonna move on to the bird itself. I went ahead and zoomed in. Now let's protect the bird. Come up to my channels, and this time click on birds, and just click this button right here to load that as a selection. Again, we see the selection indicators. The marching ants are actually hidden, but now we're gonna use a brush, okay? So click on 
this green brush here because we need to sample a color. So click that and this color picker comes up and I want to sample a color like maybe right here and click OK. Now I'm going to try 20%, nice soft edge brush and see if I can just build this up. See what, I can paint over this. The texture remains, I'm just painting over this brown, ugly stain. We don't want that in there. And we can sample different colors as we go. To sample a new color, hold down your Alt or Option key and click and that will sample a new color. And I'm just, I sped the video up here because, you know, this takes a while. But I'm just sampling different areas and painting over those areas. But remember, with this technique, frequency separation, the textures remain. We're just painting over the ugly brown areas, okay? But remember, sample from different areas. And notice in this gray area down here, I sampled some of the darker gray color. I went ahead and zoomed the image back out. Now let's take a look and see how I've done. Here is the before. I'm on the frequency separation group. Clicking the eye, here's the before. And now here is the after. Well, I think we've got it. We've eliminated that ugly brown stain coming through the birds. And I, for one, am a lot happier. And I want to thank you, Larry, for letting us know about this. I totally missed it on my original edit. I really think it's a good idea after you've edited your images, let people see them because sometimes people will see things that you'll never see. And you'll say, oh, I didn't realize that branch was coming out of that corner. I didn't realize there was a brown streak coming through the bird on the left-hand side. So it's good to show people your work. People close to you, let them take a look and critique it. And they'll find things sometimes and you can then fix them. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to wish each and every one of you again, happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.